this is high intelligence with cloud johnson and i'm back bringing you the stories that matter in cannabis and beyond and today we have a story from nj.com but before we get into that please hit that subscribe button the notification bell so you can get all the intel when it drops let's get right into it medical marijuana patients just want to grow their own weed why lawmakers won't allow it when joanne zito was initially arrested for at home cultivation nearly 10 years ago her kids were taken away from her Though her charge was later downgraded to low-level possession thanks to a grand jury, she'd already gotten a taste of how severely those who grow cannabis at home are criminalized. Only after completing a pricey drug rehabilitation program was she legally eligible to receive custody on top of serving three years of probation. Her husband, now deceased, was also charged and sentenced to drug court. That's very interesting because if Joanne Zito was black, Guess where jo- Joanne Zito would be? She will be locked up in prison for 20 years. But, you know, she got the complexion for the protection. So, it's nothing we could really do uh, at this point but to continue to fight to change the dynamics and strive for justice in a system that is clearly biased. Let's continue. Three and a half years into his sentence, he died while fulfilling the intense requirements of the program. Zito, board member at the Coalition for Marijuana in New Jersey, told the state senate in December during her public testimony in favor of at-home cultivation under the proposed legislation on Governor Phil Murphy's desk, at-home cultivation or home grow still remains severely criminalized. I don't understand. I just don't want to be in this business. I just want to grow and be left alone. Legalize me, she said during her testimony. As lawmakers finalize the details of New Jersey's cannabis legalization and decriminalization policies, at-home cultivation hasn't been considered to be included in the coming reform measures by state laws. Let me interject again. In New Jersey's next-door neighbor, New York, is following a similar path. I told you in an earlier video that I did a couple of weeks ago that New Jersey and New York and the tri-state area are all on board with making and creating cannabis policies that allow you to move to and fro between the states. So in other words, you will have the same policy in New York as you will have in New Jersey as you will have in Connecticut. So New York is doing the same thing by now allowing people to be able to cultivate their own cannabis. And the reason why is because the major cannabis monopolies within the two states have put their bid in to the governors so that they can reap all the rewards and the profits and that the mom and pop uh, micro growers cannot create cultivars that are better quality, better tasting, and at lower prices than the major uh, wholesalers. And that's what it comes down to. They don't want to have to compete with small businesses. And they want to have a monopoly on the cannabis industry. And this is the cure leaves of the world. And it's really... Is, is really sickening because the foundation of this business is the streets, is the small person, it's the person, the underdog that really carry this industry from obscurity to where it is today. But let's continue. I digress. Though the recent cleanup bill Loosens penalties for anyone carrying less than six ounces of cannabis. It also forbids anyone to create, distribute, or possess or have under his control with intent to distribute a counterfeit controlled dangerous substance. Despite how much work already has been put into legislative sessions, there are still plenty of gaps in the legislation. Ryan McGee, cannabis attorney at Riker, Danzig, Schwerer, Highland, and Peretti, 
attributes this to how much time and support is available to adequately address the topic. Managing the program from seed to sale, as we say, is the most conservative way for the state to go about doing that. So home growers general is a pretty complex variable. I think that lawmakers now believe they don't have the time and frankly the vote to adequately address at this moment, he said. However, there was one support for at-home cultivation in the legislature. Zito emphasized during an interview for his story over a decade ago, lawmakers previously discussed at-home cultivation while drafting the state's medical marijuana program. Though it wasn't included in the final draft of the Compassionate Use for Medical Marijuana Act signed by Governor John Corzine, there was once a grow at-home provision permitting registered patients to grow six plants at home without penalty. Additionally, State Senator Nicholas Gustari, oh, here comes old St. Nick, Democrat from Union, New Jersey, previously supported the pardon of John J. Wilson, a multiple sclerosis patient who grew his own cannabis. Though he only served five months of his five-year sentence, he was mandated to the intensive supervision program, New Jersey's drug court program Zito's husband was allegedly required to complete. They voted for it then. Why would they have a problem with it now, Zito said. Back in 2009, Opponents compared the state's proposed measure to California's Proposition 215, which permits medical patients to grow at home. Since California was first ever in the United States to implement a state-regulated medical marijuana program, they faced tremendous criticism from all over the country. Admittedly, the Golden State was the first to test run how such a program would operate legally. Bill sponsors responded to this criticism by shifting decision power making to the Department of Health which limited the amount of usable marijuana a patient can have to one ounce per month. However, the Assembly Health Committee soon scrapped the provision, permitting at-home cultivation entirely from the bill. We want seeds and clones to buy like in other legalized states, Zito told lawmakers. At-home cultivation isn't a radical as an idea as New Jersey lawmakers make it seem. Currently, 17 states in addition to Washington, D.C. allow at-home cultivation for adults 21 and over. Some states impose more restrictions on which of age residents can grow at home. Although Nevada and Arizona of age residents can grow recreationally, they must live at least 25 miles away from a dispensary. Additionally, Missouri law allows medical marijuana patients to grow at home who must pay a $100 fee. The real nooks and crannies of why they don't want to allow people to grow at home in New Jersey and New York is because they don't trust black people to be able to do it without creating chaos. It is simple as that. Okay? If this is Oregon or somewhere where there was a low level population of black people, they would have no problem. No problem at all. The aforementioned Nevada and Arizona and even Missouri have low level populations of black people. And guess what they have? The ability to, to grow at home. Okay. Washington, D.C. has a large population of black people. But guess what? They have some of the strictest cannabis laws for any legalized uh, district or state in the whole country. It's really insane. We're talking about a plant here. We're not talking about building a nuclear weapon in your basement or creating a pipe bomb or something like that. We're talking about growing a plant that can help people with all types of ailments. But they really don't want that because that will cut out the pharmaceutical guys. And they don't want that either. They want to be making money hand over fist. Well, let's continue. Others have more progressive measures. Alaska permits anyone 21 years or older to cultivate six plants. Oh, another one, low-level black population, the ability to grow and cultivate plants. Put two and two together. Additionally, Massachusetts allows cultivation of up to a dozen plants if there are two of age residents in the household. Yet even though measurements have clear rules, like banning public consumption and allowing employers to make their own policies, if at-home cultivation continues to be ignored in this round of legalization measures, McGee said reform could happen in the future. I certainly wouldn't discount the possibility of amendments eventually being made to the law moving forward to account for it, he added. 
ultimately, lawmakers are going to need to vote to do that. And I think the general population of New Jersey will have to be on board with that. They're already on board with it, bro. What are you talking about? They already voted. People already voted to have the ability to use cannabis recreationally. You think they don't want to grow their own? It's like growing a tomato in your backyard or some strawberries in, in your little garden in the back. What's the, what's the big deal? As lawmakers configure their constituents' support for what they want in legalization measures, recent data shows New Jersey residents now know what they don't want. According to a 2018 Rutgers University poll, 60% of New Jersey voters disagree with a ban that forbids residents from growing their own cannabis at home. See? Why wouldn't you want to take control of a substance that's going to help you? Why don't you want to take control of how to, how this thing that you're going to put in your body is grown, maintained, manicured, cured, preserved? You want to be at every level of that intimate thing so that you know you're getting a quality product to your own self. People take a big gamble getting their cannabis from street, from the, the grade, the black market, whatever you want to call it, the streets. You take a big gamble because you don't know how it was grown. You don't know who grew it. You don't know what chemicals they use as pesticides inside that. You're taking a big gamble. So if you could do it yourself, that eliminates all the doubt. It's very interesting how these things are panning out and this is supposed to be a progressive state. New Jersey is supposed to be a progressive state. New York is supposed to be a progressive state. But when it comes to cannabis, it seems that we want to tiptoe and drag our feet. They want to tiptoe and drag their feet because the, the bottom line is they don't trust black people to make the right decisions. They And by the way, it's only a small fraction of black people that actually consume cannabis. Okay? It's not a large swath of the community that, that consumes cannabis. So it's a stereotype that is in the heads of these politicians that are making these decisions. They believe that everyone in the black community smokes cannabis, and that's not true at all. So most people in the black community, they shy away from cannabis because they don't want that stigma on them and some of them just don't like it but this is the world we live in we live in a world of stereotypes and perception and not truth and justice and that's what we need in this cannabis industry and this has been high intelligence with cloud johnson until next time people peace